Hello and welcome to lecture 9 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. In this lecture, we will discuss the Fokker-Planck equation, which is given in the lecture notes as equation 331. The Fokker-Planck equation is the partial differential equation for probability distribution function Pxt, which is defined so that Pxt times dx is the probability that xt is in the interval x, x plus dx. Here xt evolves according to the stochastic differential equation 3, 6. In our previous lecture, we interpreted the stochastic differential equation 3, 6 using our computational definition, and we showed that we can use it to compute the time evolution of individual stochastic realizations. In particular, the relationship between 3, 6 and 3, 31 is analogical to the relationship between the Gillespie algorithm and the chemical master equation, which we discussed in chapter 1. The Gillespie algorithm computes individual realizations of the underlying stochastic process, and the chemical master equation gives the time evolution of the corresponding probability mass function. In the case of the stochastic differential equation 3, 6, the random variable xt can take arbitrary real values, so we can describe it in terms of the corresponding probability density function pxt, which evolves according to the Fokker-Planck equation 331. Thus, the stochastic differential equation 36 and the Fokker-Planck equation 331 can be viewed as equivalent descriptions of the same stochastic process. To illustrate that the Fokker-Planck equation provides the exact description of the SDE, I have included here a simple example. Considering the SDE 37, which we discussed in detail during our last lecture, we have f equal to 0 and g equal to 1. Substituting these values to the general Fokker-Planck equation 331, we obtain equation 332, which is the diffusion equation or heat equation. Considering the initial condition that x at time 0 is equal to 0, we have the corresponding solution of the diffusion equation given as this Gaussian function, which I plotted at time t is equal 1 in figure 3 to a as this red line. The gray histogram was obtained by using the SSA A6B6 for simulating this stochastic differential equation 3,7 and estimating the probability distribution function by averaging over many realizations of the stochastic process. The red line matches perfectly the gray histogram, illustrating that the Fokker-Planck equation 332 provides the exact description of the underlying stochastic differential equation 37. In lecture 8, we introduce stochastic differential equations as ODs with additional noise terms describing stochastic fluctuations. We have chosen this approach because ordinary differential equations are studied in detail in some prerequisite courses taken by our students in Oxford. Interestingly, if we drop the noise term from our consideration, then Oxford students have also seen the Fokker-Planck equation before. If the noise strength g is equal to 0, then the SDE 3.6 reduces to the ordinary differential equation 3.1, and the Fokker-Planck equation becomes the first order linear partial differential equation, which is studied in detail in the differential equations courses in Oxford, where we start with first order linear partial differential equations, and we introduce the method of characteristics, which are solutions of this ODE 3.1. In particular, the OD31 is introduced as an auxiliary ordinary differential equation, which helps us to solve the corresponding first order partial differential equation. However, these two descriptions are equivalent, so nothing stops us to start with the given OD31 and think about the corresponding first order partial differential equation as a different way to interpret the solutions to the OD31. I will illustrate this using a simple example. My OD has k2 minus k1x on the right hand side, where k1 and k2 are constants. This is exactly the same ODE which was the deterministic model of the production degradation system studied in detail in chapter 1. 
In that case, K2 was the rate of production and K1 was the rate of degradation. In Chapter 1, we have used the production degradation example to illustrate both the underlying mathematical theory and the computer implementation with the MATLAB demonstration included in Lecture 2. Given the initial condition of x at time 0, the solution of this OD is given by this formula. The initial condition is also needed for solving the partial differential equation 3, 3, 1. In chapter 1, my initial condition was x at time 0 is equal to 0, which corresponds to the Dirac delta function initial condition for p. The Dirac delta function is again introduced in detail to Oxford students in one of our prerequisite courses. In the video on the right, my initial condition could be considered a numerical approximation of the Dirac delta function. More precisely, I have used the initial condition to be uniformly distributed in a small interval around zero. Choosing the same parameter values as in chapter one, the ratio of rate constant is equal to 10, which is the steady state of this ODE. We can see that the first order linear partial differential equation describes that the Dirac distribution effectively travels along the solution of this ODE. As an exercise, you could also explicitly solve this first order linear partial differential equation using the method of characteristics. You will obtain that the probability distribution function gets more concentrated as time progresses and therefore it also exponentially grows to infinity as it is shown in the video, which shows the time evolution of Pxt until time t is equal to 50. The ordinary differential equation studied in this video can also be formally rewritten as this stochastic differential equation. What I did here, I have added a constant Nystrom with additional parameter k3 to the original ordinary differential equation. Considering k3 equal to 0, this stochastic differential equation goes back to the original ordinary differential equation. So this video can be viewed as the probability distribution function corresponding to this SDE for k3 equal to 0. Next, we will increase the value of k3 to a non-zero positive number. The solution of the Fokker-Planck equation for k3 equal to 0 0.1 is plotted here as the red probability distribution. The blue distribution is the solution for k3 equal to 0, which we have presented before. We observe that the red distribution is moving with the same speed towards the steady state as the OD solution. But the probability distribution also extends, increases its variance as time increases. Because some stochastic trajectories approach the steady state 10 slower than the mean value, and some stochastic trajectories are faster. At the end, the probability distribution converges to the steady state distribution, which I plotted here as the green histogram. The stationary distribution can be obtained by solving the stationary Fokker-Planck equation, which we obtain from the Fokker-Planck equation by putting the left-hand side equal to zero. To do that, we have to assume that our coefficients f and g only depend on x, but not on time t. In this case, we drop the dependence of functions f and g on time t and we define the stationary probability distribution function PSX as the limit t goes to infinity of the probability distribution function PXT. It satisfies the stationary Fokker-Planck equation, which is just an ordinary differential equation that we can solve explicitly. Integrating the stationary Fokker-Planck equation, we obtain that PSX is given by this formula which I have written here in two different ways. The first one gives the stationary distribution in terms of the functions f and g appearing in the stochastic differential equation. It is given as equation 336 in the lecture notes. In the second formulation, 
we introduce the diffusion coefficient defined as g square divided by 2. The diffusion coefficient stands in the Fokker-Planck equation in front of the second derivative. Both the noise strength g and the diffusion coefficient d give us the same piece of information and we can easily transform between them. In some application, it is the diffusion coefficient which is more often to be given to describe stochastic fluctuations. Then the stationary distribution is given by this formula, which is equation 356 in the lecture notes. The solution of the stationary Fokker-Planck equation is specified up to a constant factor because any multiple of the stationary distribution is also a solution of this ordinary differential equation. To specify this constant c, we use the normalization condition that the integral of the probability distribution function has to be equal to 1. This formula can immediately be used to find the stationary distribution. So let us discuss some examples. Our first example is the stochastic differential equation, which I used in my previous videos. Here function f is equal to k2 minus k1x and function g is the constant k3. Using formula 336, we obtain the following result, which was plotted in our last video as the green line. In particle, we conclude that the stationary distribution is the normal distribution with mean k2 over k1. Here, overline C is the normalization constant. I have put an overline above C to distinguish it from the constant C, which appears in the formula 336, because they are not exactly equal. The overline C is equal to the constant in front of the exponential, which is 2 times C divided by k3 square. In this simple example, we can find the normalization constant explicitly by completing the square and rewriting the stationary probability distribution function as the normal distribution with mean k2 over k1. In more complicated examples, we can find the value of the normalization constant c by numerically calculating the integral of this function using a computer. Our next example is stochastic differential equation 326, which has two favorable states. Its solution was presented in our last lecture in figure 31D. Continuing this blue trajectory for a longer time, which includes at least a few hundred switches between the favorable states, we can estimate the stationary distribution. This gray histogram was estimated using the simulation up to time t equal to 10 million. In figure 3.2b, we compare it with the theoretical results obtained by solving the stationary Fokker-Planck equation, which is plotted as this red line. As you can see, we have observed our system for sufficiently long time so that there is no visible error between the theoretical exact result and the result of my computer code. So far, I have explained what the Fokker-Planck equation is and how it can be used to help us to analyze the underlying stochastic differential equation. My next question is, can you derive the Fokker-Planck equation for the probability distribution function pxt in this form? That is, assume that xt satisfies the stochastic differential equation 3.6 and derive that the corresponding probability density function pxt satisfies the Fokker-Planck equation. If you have an idea how to approach this question, please press the pause button on this video and try to derive it yourself. If not, then I will give you some further hints in 5 seconds. We start with the chapman kolmogorov equation, which is written here. It is intuitively a very clear equation. We have times denoted s and t, where s is less than t. On the left-hand side, we have the probability of going from state y at time s to state z at time t plus delta t. The integrand on the right-hand side states that we can find this probability by going from state y at time s 
to an intermediate state x at time t and then continue from state x at time t to state z at time t plus delta t. Since the intermediate state x can be arbitrary real number, we have to add these probabilities over all the possible intermediate states x. So we integrate over all x on the real line. Let me also add here a historical remark that the chapman kolmogorov equation is named after Sidney Chapman, who was a professor in Oxford 70 years ago. In fact, when I tried to find the origin behind the chapman kolmogorov terminology, I came across an obituary of Kolmogorov where there is written the backwards and forwards partial differential equations in the 1931 paper can be thought of as differentiate versions of what is called the chapman kolmogorov equation. I once asked Sidney Chapman about chapman kolmogorov and was surprised to find that he didn't know of that terminology. This quote not only illustrates that some Oxford mathematicians can make impact without noticing it, but it also introduces our approach to the derivation of the Fokker-Planck equation. The Fokker-Planck equation is sometimes called the Kolmogorov forward equation. And the first part of this quote states that we want to differentiate the Chapman-Kolmogorov equation in some way to obtain the Fokker-Planck equation. To derive the Fokker-Planck equation, you can follow the following steps. Start with the Chapman-Kolmogorov equation. Multiply both sides by a smooth test function phi z and integrate over z to deduce the following equation. On the right hand side there are transition probabilities telling us what happened during the time interval of length delta t, when the system goes from time t to time t plus delta t. These transition probabilities can be connected with our computational definition of SDEs, which includes functions f and g. So we use the Taylor expansion of phi z around the point x on the right hand side and use our computational definition of SDE to rewrite the right hand side as the following equation. Finally, use integration by parts on the right hand side and derive the Fokker-Planck equation in the limit delta t goes to zero. If you have any difficulties with this derivation, you can find a detailed step-by-step -step derivation in the lecture notes on pages 69 to 72. Further practice of this technique is also included on pages 73 to 74, where the SDE solution is restricted to interval zero infinity, using a reflective boundary condition at x is equal zero. This brings me to the end of lecture nine, where we have continued in our discussion of chapter three, covering sections 3.3 and 3.4 on the Fokker-Planck equation. Please read pages 66 to 74 of the lecture notes before watching the video of lecture 10. In our next lecture, we will continue in our discussion of chapter 3, introducing the Kolmogorov backward equation and analyzing SDEs with multiple favorable states. Thank you for listening to lecture 9 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. Bye-bye.